really excited to chat to this uh, brand because they are they're kind of like me they um, don't believe in a million ingredients and getting rich off long shelf life um, oh I love you too Thomas okay um, let's see hi Warren long time no see I expect a call soon Right, come on, hunt it. Right. I'm not doing a duck face, Warren, that's that. Oh, by the way, I've got these blue blockers on because Divvy Me tried um, some hydroxy cup in the gym uh, instead of my normal one, which is game on. So this is going to give you energy. And um, hi, Hunter Gatherer. And basically, it sent me into a caffeine rage and it gave me a ton of anxiety. And I'm not going to be able to sleep tonight. So, the last thing I need is more blue light causing me to have insomnia. That's why I've got these on. Um, okay, right. I'm going to find them. I'm going to get going. Digga, digga, digga. There they are. Hi, guys. Hi. Hello. How are you? How are you? We're good. We're good. Okay, I'm, I'm, I have to apologize about my scattiness. I was just explaining. <laughs> I've been like, you know, I'm like a biohacker and I like to try all products. So I necked two hydroxycut halfway through a run and I just had to finish running. You know, when you take the wrong pre-workout. Like, and it's just not a nice feeling. So no, I've how many cups of coffee is it like? Chamomile tea, everything. So just bear with me. If I go down a rabbit hole, just say, Davinia, come back. <laughs> so good. We see you've got your blue, blue light blockers on. Well, I just thought, do you know what? I'm not going to sleep tonight. The last thing I need is more blue light to make me, you know, insomniac. So, anyway, right. So, welcome. Awesome. Good well. to be here. How's everything doing there? Where are you, first of all? Yeah, so we are in Essex in the UK. Um, surprisingly sunny today, though. Yeah, it's rubbish here, so you probably... Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Which part uh, of the are you in? I just wanted to understand... We'll get straight into it. Um, how you guys, you're a couple, aren't you? Yeah, we are. And how you guys sort of um, got into this brand, because I love your brand. It's the one I always go to. My kids love mayonnaise, which is great, because I found your brand. So tell me how it started and where the passion comes from. Yeah, of course. So um, obviously, I'm Amy, and this is... Jeff. <laughs> and we are, are partners you? in life and business. And... Um, it started for me, I was diagnosed celiac as a baby, so 18 months old. Um, and back then there was no bold ingredients on the back of the pack for you for allergens. So you really had to know what you were eating. Constantly looking at the back of the pack, understanding ingredients and how food impacted me. It wasn't until Jeff and I met as um, teenagers that kind of the journey of Hunter and Gather really sort of began. But yeah, because your much. surname sort of, it's not just like you're almost like a sort of ancestral brand, which yeah, is yeah. Are, with the minimal ingredients. They're your surnames, aren't they? Well, it's our family tree surname. So mm -hmm. I come from a, from a line of gather goods and Amy's from a line of hunt. So hunt and gather is kind of a nod, not only to our paleo philosophy, our kind of ancestral approach of things, but also to our, own, our own ancestry too. Yeah, it wasn't until back in 2000, and my final year of uni, from, from really bad... Um, like stomach pains, like real, real bad GI distress. And I didn't know what was causing it. Um, and it was just a chance encounter with a physiotherapist when I was training for a marathon. And he said to me, hey, Jeff, like, you haven't got to be eating all these highly refined carbohydrates. And I was like, oh, of course you do. You need it for energy, right? I've always believed that you need high carbohydrates to, to fuel your workouts and, and training and stuff. Um, so he showed me a video by Gary Taubes called Why We Get Fat. And bear in mind, this was back in 2012 when there wasn't a great deal of information available here, especially in the UK. Um, and yeah, so essentially went down that rabbit hole back in 2012, really started to understand about kind of the paleo principles and the philosophy behind it. Cut out all the sugars, the grains and the inflammatory oils. And I was like, oh wow, like, this is what health feels like. I was going, previously I was, I was always hungry every two or three hours I was needing to eat. Um, and yeah, yeah, because you're was, constantly wow. spiking your insulin, aren't you? And you yeah. know, it's just dropping and peaking and troughing. And you're always chasing that next snack. And literally, it can take, if you're like in an office situation, you'll have your snack. And while you're just like busy doing whatever, it'll just trickle in, won't it? Twix, yeah. Mars, Brilliant. Brilliant. Starbucks, whatever. 
It's so yeah. true. And it is basically making people billions and billions of pounds Absolutely. just into their hormones. So what you're doing is kind of the opposite of what big industrial yeah. food companies are doing. That's why I like you because I can see most of the ingredients on there. Oh, I mean, you're, you're talking about four ingredients. I know you probably shouldn't say this, but okay, so you've got your mayonnaise as you Make it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so how many, how many ingredients in that mayonnaise? Say your standard one. Um, so there's around 13 in conventionally supermarket mayo. Uh, so on the so big like names Hellman's, out there. I know you probably can't say it, but I know. <laughs> yeah. I think we probably can. Yeah, we can say it. Yeah, yeah. Quadruple the amount. Quadruple the amount of cheap ingredients in there. Yeah, it, we obviously understood about ingredients from looking at the back of the pack. And I'm, yeah, we, we're really into that. But actually, it wasn't until we even began this journey of Hunter and Gather, where we got to see the other lens of it as a producer and actually go under the layers even further that we were so shocked and we really knew that we needed to do this because things like in normal mayonnaise, it says free range egg, but actually it doesn't tell you that they're powdered possibly from China or European source, and it doesn't give you that extra layer of information. Yes, yeah, so, so when we were speaking with manufacturers, there was like, no, it's not possible to do, and we was like, no, guys, it is possible. It's only yeah, going like, to- Watch us. It is possible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's only going to have an eight month shelf life, as opposed to two years on Hellman's. Um, but, you know, this is how food should be. It shouldn't be like uber long life. Yeah, exactly. Agreed. Agreed. I mean, things are meant to go off, you know, otherwise you'd be eating plastic. It's like, you know, that McDonald's experiment, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, I think they've jumped onto the bandwagon now and now having um, uh, this because basically I used to go to a chiropractor when I knackered my back and he had a McDonald's a Happy Meal and he had it there for five years and it still retained its shape. Beautiful. You know what I mean? And it just shows you if bacteria won't touch it, why the hell are we giving Happy Meals to our kids? Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? It's just setting them up for a crappy life. Absolutely. You know, that's, that's why I just want to stay away from processed food for my kids because I'm an addict, you know, and I don't know if that started from an 80s diet, which was full of your Hellman's mayonnaise yeah, and your yeah. ketchups and everything. And it's constantly going into your stomach, going into your brain. And, you know, how am I meant to know that? That wasn't my path to, like, self-destruction. You know, that was where the trigger was. Yeah. So I really admire what you're doing, actually, because it's, it's, it's honest and it's how it would have been maybe about 100 years ago when our yeah. grandparents were, like, cooking at home. But you've taken, you've taken the hard work out of it. It's convenient. So who do you stop with at the moment? Yeah, so we started at the end of 2017. Um, since then, we've, um, with Selfridges in London, Whole Foods Market, Ocado, if you can yes. get a booking slot at the moment, um, Amazon, um, and lots of independents up and down the country. And we're available in Dubai, El Corte Inglés in Spain, actually. When that opens up, I'll go down. Because I just said to you, I said, oh, please send me some products. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here. And you've been caught in glaze. Because that's like a sort of like John lewis -y type place, but mm. with a supermarket in, isn't it? It's a, nice, it's a nice place. Right, so speaking of which, ingredients. I see avocado oil is a huge part of your product range. What interested you in the avocado oil specifically? Why don't you use sunflower oil? Because obviously it's cheaper. Yeah, so there's, there's a few reasons there. So avocado oil... It's, it's pressed from the fruit, right? So very similar to olive oil. Um, it's, it's a nutrient-dense fruit oil rather than a highly processed, highly refined seed oil that's highly oxidized and high in omega-6s. So those seed oils that we are led to believe that are really heart-healthy and, and really great for us and cover our lovely countryside in, with yellow plants, grape yeah. seed, I'm calling you out there. Um, yeah. You know, they're linked to very uh, high inflammatory conditions. Um, people don't realise that these oils were actually first created as engineering lubricants. So yeah, that, didn't they clean machinery with it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and was it, was it um, Axel Keys who came up with the whole um, study yeah. about butter being bad and margarine being good, but really yeah. he, he messed up the, um, he, he, he played with the results. Yeah, he, he, he picked out seven countries from a study of about 22 countries and essentially cherry pick the data to prove his hypothesis. So any good scientist should be trying to disprove the hypothesis. However, he was like, hey, no, I'm going down this route. Cognitive uh, confirmation bias kicked in and he couldn't backtrack out of it. And it's been a social experiment for the last 40 years. And we've you know, been consuming low fat products, 
products stuffed with sugar, highly refined seed oils, and you've got all sorts of chronic conditions that are just, you know, just hockey stick over the last 40 years. Um, but yeah, so avocado oil is a fantastic nutrient dense fruit oil. It's really versatile in that it's kind of a neutral flavor as well. Um, and it adds that nice creaminess to our mayonnaise. We always get complimented on how like, creamy tasting it is. Um, and that comes down to that nice kind of viscous, thick, it's quite thick on, on the palate, yeah, in a good way. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you've hit that sweet spot with the texture, which obviously other companies spend billions of pounds investigating the sweet spot using artificial ingredients and obviously maintaining the shelf life, where you, you sort of said, forget the shelf life, let's yeah. just go for the real product, the natural thing, which congratulations to you. And you know what? You should, you should be able to just eat it all and get rid of the bowl, you know? It, it, it yeah. makes perfect sense to me. So tell me, how do you harvest or how do you get, because there's different ways to get avocado oil, how do you get yours? Because I know there's a chemical way to extract it and then there's a natural way to extract it, which is obviously more expensive, but I guess more beneficial. Can you explain that process? Yeah, so again, it's another layer of nuance that the lay consumer doesn't know about. Uh, yeah. they, they'll just see avocado oil, or they'll see olive oil, or they'll see MCT oil, for instance, and not realise the different layers and different kind of uh, grades and standards. From day dot, we've always said every single oil that we procure and we get from our suppliers is always going to be hexane-free and through a physical method, using either steam or just a centrifuge. We're not going to use hexane and solvents. And we didn't actually realise that. What's hexane? Hexane is one of the solvents that is used in that particular process. Mm -hmm. So in America, for instance, they're quite hot on this sort of thing. Um, you, you'll find it on their packaging, on their labeling, hexane free. Um, so yeah. It's, yeah. That's good to know actually. So it, would it say it in, uh, in the UK yet about, is that, it, it's not yet? Absolutely not. We very rarely hear of it in the UK. And another, what I was meant to mention when we were talking about rapeseed, the name for that in America is canola oil. And, and you does. often hear of canola free and it's, it's rapeseed the same um, type of but yeah. product, but it's just a different name. But I mean, I don't have, I, 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 sorry, go on. Go on, sorry, I just, I just got a delay on you there. Say that again. Um, so I think we just were saying that um, obviously there, a lot of this kind of information does come from the US and it's just ensuring that people are aware of that this canola oil is actually the rapeseed that most um, kind of supermarket products have within them yeah. um, and, it, and it is, is the same. Hexane does increase the yield of the oil, which is why a lot of brands will use this chemical method. It's because the process itself brings out more oil from the seed oils, vegetable oils, or even avocados. Whereas a physical method, you don't get as high a yield, but obviously you're not getting that residual, residue sorry, come through into the oil itself. Absolutely. So where do you get your avocados from? Which country? Yeah, so we I'm source... sure they don't grow in Essex, do they? <laughs> <laughs> not quite yet. We've been trying, but not quite yet. Um, so Kenya and from Mexico. Um, yeah. So yeah, Kenya, we work with a lot of small carp farmers over there, um, about 800 farmers. And we've got a mill out in, out in Kenya that we work in partnership with. Um, so yeah, it's a fantastic way of bringing additional income to the farmers that may have kind of various crops on their farms so instead of working with um really large kind of avocado farms that only um sell kind of to to export market for supermarket avocados we're using avocados that may have kind of sunburn they may have superficial insect damage um none of them are pesticides are used it's just how avocados are grown so there's a lot of misinformation out of there um when it comes to kind of how how produce is grown and how it does get to your how it does get to your table yeah, Jeff and, and I was sometimes a little bit more expensive, but you really get price per penny. You get you get so much more nutrition. It's like it's you can just take out, so you can like cut your meal in half if you have the nutrition. A, you won't be as hungry because your body won't be craving any nutrition, and B, it's tastier. Yeah, that's why you go for high quality, not because you're some sort of like diva wanker. It's because you a you want to stick to your dietary goals, and B, you want to feed your family properly so they're not picking up crisps all the time. That's, yeah. my, that's my philosophy around organic. And in your case, you're helping farmers in Africa, which makes you feel a little bit good as well. Yeah, for sure. It's all about nutrient density as well, you know? It's yeah. like people really get obsessed by a price and it's like, well, for us, for instance, our product is as good as it can be. Every single ingredient is as good as it can be. We're our, we're our customer first and foremost. So 
if it doesn't get past my desk, it's not going to get into our product. You know, that's, that's, that's the, the kind of the, the ethos we've taken from day dot. Yeah, absolutely. Now then, I noticed that you do actually, because personally, I'm not vegan. I eat slight to eat nose to tell wherever possible. And we'll talk about your supplements later. Yeah. Um, you've got a vegan mayonnaise, haven't you? Because a lot of my followers are vegan. And yeah. I'm sure they'd be interested to know a mayonnaise that's vegan. So you don't use eggs. Can you tell me what you do and how you came about those ingredients? Yeah, so it was a bit of an interesting journey because <laughs> this, this is my project. Um, so the the classic mayonnaise uses liquid British free-range eggs from St. U Farms in Cornwall. So they are amazing eggs in themselves. Um, like I mentioned to you, I'm celiac. I'm also um, dairy intolerant and I believed that I was egg intolerant. I've since had more tests and understand that it's just the white part of the egg not wow. the power egg. What test did you do? Because I know a load of people would be interested in that because I'm test crazy, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so it was the Armstrong Health 200 plus test. Okay. And what it was, it's, um, it was a pinprick blood test, filled the tube at home, sent it back to the lab. Um, they give you a bespoke uh, print-off sheet of over 200 foods that they test you specifically for. It's kind of like a reaction. An IgG. Uh, uh, yeah, and... Again, so it's, really it's, it's nice and directional, isn't it? So it's not prescriptive, but it's directional, and a lot of a lot of things did correlate. Sorry, I've jumped in there. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> but the um, so our classic mayo is egg yolk. So I can actually eat our our full range now, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. But at the point of, of believing that I had got this egg intolerance, it opened my mind to some of our other people that were following Hunter and Gabba that A, may not have wanted to eat eggs as a person yeah. of preference, or two, had an allergy. And yeah. we realised that there's a lot of people with different lifestyle requirements and allergies yeah. that could eat our products because of the clean nature of them, but there was just that one ingredient that was causing um, a problem. So with the egg-free mayo, it's still 100% avocado oil, but we use um, a white pea protein instead of eggs, um, and konjac root, which is... Um, a prebiotic <laughs> fibre. <laughs> it's a prebiotic fibre. But only, only a small amount that helps with the, um, like the stability of the okay. fruit itself. Yeah, so it's like, it, it looks a bit like a... Cassava root. Yeah, a bit like yeah. a cassava. Okay. Looks similar to and that. So, so that just blends together as you would a normal egg yolk, I guess, and it just and it gives it the same consistency. Yeah, it's, it certainly is different. So, for instance, I am I prefer the classic mayo because I'm just you know a mayo sure. fan. Prefer the eggs. The 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 egg free mayo definitely has a different kind of texture and mouthfeel to it. But you know, interestingly enough, when we're in front of customers, especially at food shows, they actually love both of them. So it's always quiet. Yeah, because you're probably a connoisseur right now. You can like, you're, you're, you're like a sommelier, really, of exactly. mayonnaise, aren't you? So <laughs> to the average Joe, like me, I wouldn't probably notice the difference, to be honest, would I? Yeah. See, I personally prefer the egg-free. So we oh, are yeah. a split, but it's, it's sharper in flavour. So if you're used to more of a, like, lemony, tangy type mayonnaise, the egg-free one is, is more that root, because we use lemon juice. Um, but it's allergen, it's completely free of all of the top 14 allergens. There's no mustard, there's no soy, no dairy, no eggs. Um, so we found that to be really popular because there's no inflammatory oils, there's no allergens, it's still really clean. Um, so do you know why, that, why I like this? Because I've not noticed any allergies in my kids or stressors, but they will get them because we all get them due yeah. to overexposure. So your products are really good for me because I know, hand on heart, that I'm not giving my kids any inflammatory ingredients. They're just going to say, I mean, I've got one kid with ADHD and I should avoid all inflammatory products to stop him from going on one tangent. And you know what? It's just easier. It's just easier to just know you've got a decent product that you can just dollop on a burger and we're done, you know? Yeah, it brings flavor it, 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 as really, well. it really takes the guesswork out of like tea time hassle. Like we had yeah. a barbecue this evening nice. with no mayonnaise, so I'm having an argument about the ketchup because I don't want to talk because he'll go nuts. I mean, it's just, it's great to have something you can go to in the supermarket, grab off the shelf and just be able to trust it and not have, not have to do a flipping PhD in microbiology because yeah. you're reading the back, you know? It's such a con, I can't stand big, massive, um, essays that you've got to go into. Okay, right, so let's start talking about your products. I've tried all your products, love them. Can you tell me a little bit more about each one? First of all, let's start with the MCT oil because obviously I use it every yeah. day. Let's, <laughs> fabulous, let's have a look at the MCT oil. <laughs> 
So with the MCT, we literally sat right near our kettle. So that's why we had it to hand because um, we have it every day with our morning coffee. So some of your followers and our followers may be aware of Bulletproof Coffee. Mm -hmm. So a blend of MCT, coffee, grass-fed butter, and we also add our collagen to that as well every morning. Yeah. Um, so MCT is medium chain triglyceride coconut oil. Ours is 100% from coconut, so some MCT can be derived from palm oil as well as, as um, coconut. And just to add there, it's 100% organic coconuts, triple steam distilled, no solvents, no hexanes used. Um, so yeah, it's another important thing to distinguish. And if, if, you know, if brands or other companies aren't actually stating this, then nine times out of 10, they're likely using, uh, you know, not yeah, the my, my sort of like quick dash to a supermarket is if they're not boasting about it, they're not doing it. Yeah. You know, if it's saying gluten free, dairy free, I'm like, okay, so where's the sugar? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> so you just got to know what it's, it's like lying by omission, you know? Yeah, go through the yeah. marketing BS. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they spend billions on that. They probably spent, if they spent less on the marketing, they could probably improve the ingredients. That's our ethos, isn't it? That's, that is literally our business model. It's like, hey, let's make our products as good as possible. Let's get some real hardcore fans. Let yeah. them spread the message. And, you know, let's, that 15% that brands spend on their marketing, let's put that back into the products and make the products as good as it can be. And let's see how it goes. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. Just quickly, someone just mentioned then, can, you still, they, can they still order from you during lockdown? Are you still delivering? Yeah, absolutely. Just, uh, just not to Spain at the moment, unfortunately. I know. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I've got rip off the worst MCT oil. I know what everyone's saying about some MCT oils giving them the runs. It's yeah. just rubbish, and I pay double what yours is. Disaster um, pants. Um, Disaster pants. Yeah. <laughs> it's no, it's so annoying. Honestly, once you get your sort of like key products, your body gets used to it, and you thrive on it. And now it's just sent me all the tears. Anyway. Another one of your products that I'm a huge fan of is the peptides, the yeah. collagen bovine peptides. Now, obviously, this is clearly not vegan, but can you explain some of the benefits and the real testimonials you're getting? Because you don't use, like, influencers or you don't pay any affiliates. Like, I don't get paid or anything no. like that. I just use your products because I like them. Um, can you explain what your clients are finding with that bovine? Personally, I find it's brilliant for my gut more than anything because i do have a tendency to get leaky gut so yeah, you explain what 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 you're seeing and i'll have some more kombucha <laughs> yeah i'm um, with like just just the, the too long to read uh take on it is we've been absolutely blown away by the the reviews and the feedback we get from our customers every single day and um, when it comes to collagen peptides um we knew how good the product was we knew how good it was to be having things like bone broth and collagen in our diets um, but it's only until people start, like you know, started buying it from us over a year ago now. Every single day, we get you know people emailing us, leaving reviews, calling us even, and saying, "Hey, I've had the best night's sleep ever. Um, I've been taking collagen, and it's really helped my sleep. For instance, with the high glycine." Um, oh, yeah, people, of course. I need that tonight. <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah, get, get a dose of collagen. Um, we've had you know vegetarians, for instance, who supplement with it um, because they're they're tactically supplementing with it because they know that they're deficient in protein. Um, their hairline has grown back after a year of using it, not just our collagen in general. Um, so it's, it's really, really fascinating. Yeah, I think for, obviously, we, we are hunter and gather. It's about the ancestral philosophies, philosophies. And we also agree with eating nose to tail and that you should utilise or going to eat the animal. And there's an kind of sort of ancestral philosophy around like for like eating as well, which we'll come back to our, on our supplements. But collagen from the bovine, which we use also, I know you mentioned your gut, but it supports your skin as well. In the your right nails for like. well. yeah. Your nails, your hair. Um, so we have many that use it for optimal health, but we also have others that want to kind of improve complexion, um, the strength, like we mentioned, of their hair, hair and the nails as well. Yeah, well, so I, I think see... it, it, it's, it's a principal building block, isn't it? You know, I mean, when you sort of think about um, a hunter-gatherer existence, they always boiled their bones and they yeah. always extracted all the, you know, they always extracted all the goodness from the bones and they drank and they thrived on that. Like most of Asia used to put their rice in bone broth and that's how they thrived as well. It's been around for 
well, since mankind first lit a yeah. fire, I guess. What made us human, right? Arguably. So to suddenly to have it cut out of our diet in the 20th century, well, like sort of towards, towards the end of the 20th century when convenience food kicked in, I think definitely has a correlation with mental health, with gut health, with obesity, with our insatiable desire for sugars. You have no sort of like protection in your gut and it just plays havoc with your mental health. I think it's, uh, I, to, to be honest, I love being able to have it. I put it in the kids' smoothies because it doesn't taste of anything. Yeah, nice. I'm constantly trying to give them nutrition that my great grandmother would have done, you know? And, you know, she lived to a ripe old age. So, I mean, I just think it's a really easy hack. What other ways are people using it? Has anyone used it topically on the skin? No, I, I, you know what I did? I did, right, that's what I did. I mixed it with <laughs> aloe vera gel and I put it on my face. And then I used this electrical current thing and gave myself like a collagen sort of infusion. So there you go, there's another one. <laughs> nice. Well, we, um, there's a lot of um, kind of research out there around collagen being hydrolyzed so that your body can utilize the amino acids, um, which our peptides are hydrolyzed collagen peptides. That's what I want to get into actually. Can you just explain why yours is more bioavailable than most others? Because obviously women, they'll go into boots and they'll see collagen in a nice pink bottle. It's full of sugary flavors and everything. It's all very nice and feminine, but it's bollocks. Again, it's marketing. Yeah. You're paying like 50 quid for a few shots and most of it's sugar and most of it is made from crappy collagen. Can you explain yours? And I just want to reiterate, it's flavorless. You can put it in your coffee, you can put it in your soup, you can put it in your smoothie. You don't taste it, it doesn't smell of anything. Yeah, for sure. So it's flavorless. Um, it's, it's still as close to as natural products as possible. So sometimes you do get variances in kind of the odor and taste, you know, a little bit. Um, but most, obviously being a collagen connoisseur, we can pick it up, it's, it's almost like, having a, a glass of wine or a coffee, you know, you can tell the, the difference. Um, but it's as good as tasteless and as good as odorless. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's highly bioavailable. So it's called hydrolysis, which is an enzymatic process. And it essentially breaks the molecules, the molecules down. So our gut can essentially digest it easily. Um, you've got things like the creams that you see in the, in the cosmetic section. And there is kind of studies around them that saying, you know, it's, the absorption levels aren't, aren't particularly where the, the manufacturers are saying they are. Um, but yeah, I see some comments here in the section asking about um, marine or bovine. Obviously ours is bovine at this stage. And can you put it into coffee? Absolutely, we love to put it in coffee. Um, a tablespoon or two into a coffee is, is great. Um, yeah. I, to just to add to that, it will take you out of a fasted state. I mean, but it won't spike your insulin, will it? Yeah, so... Again, there's that like blurred lines around because, what it's because, Yeah, because what I, what I do with yeah. my sort of like intermittent fasting, what I don't want to do is spike my insulin. So I get into the insulin sort of... Correct, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I don't want to start kicking off my digestive system. That's why I just have the MCT all in the morning. Yeah. I probably have another coffee with your peptides in, in the afternoon, prepare my gut before I start my onslaught of eating everything in the fridge. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm like, prepare... Yeah. <laughs> nice. so I, I i find it really handy product and tell me again where's that available so that is the best place at the moment would be our website uh say so we're delivering throughout the country and to some international um but amazon as well yeah, someone just said do you deliver to germany um we're on amazon germany and we also um work with simply keto in berlin yeah which are an awesome keto keto shop in, in germany cafe yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Um, okay, this is the controversial one for some people. Mm -hmm. These are your supplements. Bring I it love on. it. I've been following a company over in the States who does something similar. Yeah. Uh, I've forgotten what they're called, Ancestral or something or other. Anyway, I've started introducing uh, offal to me and the kids. Basically, I disguise liver. I get organic chicken livers and I whiz it up and then I'll put it in a spag bowl and you don't uh, taste it, but you get that brilliant liver. Because remember when we had mad cow disease and everything, it was all about awful, killing yeah. us all, you know, basically, it was like totally poo-pooed, you just don't eat awful. But now, obviously, it's, it's gone like 360 again, and um, everyone's saying that it's the most nutrient dense, it's exactly what our ancestors ate, it's what our body needs, that deep nutrition. So. You have cut out all the 
sort of sickly bit and you've put it in a little capsule, haven't you? Yeah, Can exactly. Can you tell me about those supplements, what they are, what they're used for, the absorption rate and how it could improve our health? Yeah, for sure. So, mate, look, arguably, organ meats are nature's original superfood, right? So we talk about blueberries or raspberries or chia seeds being superfoods or goji berries. But hey, like, if you look at it for an out, like, gram per gram nutrient profile, liver is the most nutrient dense food on the planet. Um, but it all started actually. So, you know a bit about MTHFR, right? And the methylation yeah. pathways. So, I'm homozygous for the C677. Um, okay. So, uh, yeah. So Explain went, a little bit. You're B12, I guess. You, you, yeah, so I went down the rabbit hole. You'd be terrible vegan. Yeah, I've been absolutely horrendous vegan, like really, yeah. really bad. Um, yeah. So yeah, obviously your requirement for B12, riboflavin, folate, that sort of thing is like, you, you need a lot of it. Um, so I started experimenting with bringing like organ meats back into my diet about a year and a half ago. And I was like, oh, wow, like, this, is, this is making a big difference here. Um, I could have gone down the route of uh, synthetic white powders, down, down the route of, you know, capsules in, in Holland and Barrett's. You look at the back of them and it's a pretty scary ingredient profile. Um, but yeah, we just started looking into it. It was like, people need to be having organ meats. And it was kind of a bit of a, bit of a blind spot, really. Um, but so it many certainly people... is in the UK. I mean, it really is. a lot more in the States with the carnivore diet and everything. I mean, I'm not strictly into carnivore unless you've got a chronic illness and you really need to, you know, shift your body's chemistry. I mean, I do believe, like, particularly with massive gut health, a carnivore for maybe a month might reset you yeah. and get, your, you, you get yourself back on track. I mean, I do believe we need nutrients from plant, the plant world as well. It just depends on your genetic makeup. Yeah. But what you're doing is cutting out the hard work and the brain hassle that goes with preparing organ meats because, to be honest, they're quite cheap as well. Even organic organ meats are cheap, but we just shy away from it. We just want muscle, which is basically nothing meat, isn't it? Arguably so, yeah. And, you know, people are squeamish just cutting up chicken guys. So how are people going to deal with, you know, cutting up organs... Oh. Yeah, brain exactly yeah. thymus and all, all those good things um so yeah we went down a rabbit hole and we was like hey like we, we've got to bring these uh to our customers and people were demanding them so you can probably tell that jeff's the experimenter <laughs> more out of the two of us so he always runs his ideas past me and this one and you, go, first... you are mad why am i with you you're insane <laughs> i'm leaving but give it a go and let me know your results <laughs> But with this particular so one... So tell me, tell me, do, do, you, do you take them, by the way? Do you yeah. take them, Amy, you know, these supplements? And how often do you take them? And how long does it take for, say, a naturally depleted body to start benefiting from these superfoods, uh, your, um, uh, your little capsules full of... What have you got? You've got heart, liver, and a heart-liver liver combination, haven't you? Yeah, that's right. So, so tell me the benefits of the three of them. Sure. So with the, we've actually got one of them on the side because we have it in the morning. So this is the liver and heart one. Um, I've got that. So like we mentioned, they're freeze dried organ meats. So you retain all nutrients, yeah. So it locks in all of the benefits of those those um, kind of organ meats themselves. And there's vitamin A, vitamin B12, riboflavin, iron, copper. The, the list goes on and it's around 10 times the so if you've got a capsule for example the freeze dried um, inside is 10 times smaller than the size of the original so a, a, a capsule is half a gram of liver so essentially it's five grams of liver so if you take four capsules yeah so the, liver, the capsules are like four of those and you've got you've got about a chunk of liver haven't you essentially so yeah um, and where do you source it from? Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. No, it's fine, yeah. <laughs> and then tell me when it's sourced. <laughs> tell me the benefits of sticking with that. So they're from Icelandic lamb. They're wild roaming, grass-fed, and we don't use that term lightly at Hunter & Gather. So for us, it, if we're going to use grass-fed, they are 100% grass-fed. Another market... Grass -fed, grass finished. They don't end up on some pelleted food no. no so we yeah we believe that because with the term grass fed they could go out for a short period of time and also be fed supplementary feeds um with the icelandic lamb there is no supplementary feeds 
at all. Um, they're also free from GMOs, so obviously because they're not having any supplementary feeds, there's no antibiotics, no hormones, and they go and live out on the Icelandic mountains and it's, it's just an, an amazing way to utilise land that can't be used for other means. An interesting thing about the Icelandic sheep, they're the oldest, um, like most purest breed of lamb in the whole world. So they're about 900 years old in terms of their genetics. They were taken over to Iceland by the Vikings from Europe um, back like 900 years ago. And they are just purebred Icelandic sheep. So all the other lamb around the world, um, obviously hi 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 hybrid lamb, <laughs> still, still bloody tasty. But yeah, these, these little fellas are, are really hardy, um, you know, and they're just strong, strong specimens. So there was kind of that, that romance associated to it with the, with the ancestry of them as well. Um, well. Of course, because if you're eating something that's from a genetic line that's quite weak and that's been messed with, like GMO, you're bound to be ingesting that epigenetic problem. Yeah. So if you're getting something that's pure bread, of course, you're going to end up with the best of the best. And you you know it, and it is more bioavailable because it's in its natural form it wasn't made in a lab yeah. so basically you get it from meat that would have been what thrown away or wasted yeah yeah a lot of the organ meats aren't utilized for humans to eat anymore some of it can go into pet it's not the food. demand is there basically it's not because they're bad for you it's because it just simply isn't the demand and there's one of the capsules and you take Someone about four awesome. so interestingly as well what a lot of people don't think about when it comes to vitamins and minerals is the bioavailability again so you may see on the back of a packet of a synthetic vitamin that it's two thousand percent of your daily requirement of that particular vitamin but actually like how much like Barocca. Yeah, Thank but you. actually how much your body can utilise is interesting. With the organ meat supplements, it's... Our bodies understand it. Yeah, it's yeah. natural form. It's undefatted, so you've also got the fat in there that helps with the absorption the of fat those soluble fat soluble, vitamins. Yeah, vitamins. So that's another part that's important to have those good fats alongside your vitamins um, because you, you need that to absorb them. And I guess that's why it's so important to understand that, you know, you need to get most of your vitamins from a whole food diet. And to supplement is just to supplement. But with your supplements, it's still a whole food, but it's just it a really is, yeah. pill capsule. I was listening to Ben Greenfield the other day, who um, is a massive biohacker, like yeah, one of the guy. healthiest guys I know. And he says... Uh, the, the capsules that you've just shown there are brilliant for when you're traveling, when you're yeah. flying. It gets rid of all those free radicals that you get at altitude. They are brilliant. I mean, I suppose it would do if it's a sheep. It's used to being at altitude. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's really good to know that, you know, it, when we do start flying again, things like that can mitigate that horrible feeling of discomfort yeah. when you destabilize. Two days taking out your holiday, you just, like, feel a little bit, mm. well, yeah. of course, because the body's trying to detoxify your products just really help us do that, don't they? Yeah, they can certainly support with that. And that's, that is the, one of the interesting points about our ethos as well. But we've got a recipe on our website telling people how to make homemade mayonnaise, right? So we want yeah. people to make it themselves. We want people to go, go to a local farmer, pasture for life, 100% grass-fed, and source organs from their farmer. But hey, if they haven't we got the time, or the inclination to, or they, they're too squeamish to, that's why we exist. But first and foremost, like we're, we're huge advocates of making this stuff yourself. So Because you've got, you've got absolutely loads of um, recipes on your website, haven't you? And I'm no chef. I'm yeah. pretty shit, actually. <laughs> I, think, well, I mean, I can't be bothered with the tidying up. I can't be bothered with the arguments. I don't like it. So I'm like, I just stick to like a little, a few littles and it has to have minimal ingredients. But you've got really, really good recipes that actually even tempt me because I know they're just no-brainers for the kids. They're full of nutrition. Who designs those recipes? Um, so we do, some of them in the early days were myself, uh, taking photographs, but um, we do have um, a oh, lovely, yeah, lovely recipe developer she's called jessica she may even be watching um who creates these for us now she's um also a she has paleo keto kind of principles and it's it's uh, someone that we can really trust to to make some great recipes and then we get to try them out at home as well because we uh love convenient 
kind of foods that are really great for you too. But just a quick point there on the um, supplements, you said about how do we take them? So we recommend two capsules per day kind of as a minimum dose. Um, I personally take six per day um, because I like You to... sound very much like me. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, try. Two are good. What does twenty-two do? Yeah. You know, I'll get Mick eight. But yeah. but interestingly, um, one of our team called Bex. Again, she may be watching. Um, she started to take the supplements last week, and she messaged us today. She's like, "Man, my energy has been through the roof. Like, I feel really great." And we're like, "That's the sort of kind of that's the feedback that we live for. Like we we love that." And what's really kind of interesting at the moment is my. Um, my, a, a friend of mine was having um, B12 injections from the doctor. And this is another reason that yeah. these kind of supplements got into my mind as being a good, good idea from Jeff. Because I was hearing more and more frequently that people were visiting the doctors for these injections. Now, in the current state of pandemic that we're in, um, the doctors aren't giving out these injections at the moment. So it's really important for people that have been having these B12 injections for years that they are able to get a source of B12 in more of a natural format that they can do themselves at the moment. And like we said, eating liver would be the best option for these people. Um, but if they don't feel like they can or want to, then there are other alternatives. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, and your body will probably thank you because it's not delivered with any other artificial chemicals like some of these jabs are, you know? Yeah. Which I mean, it's worried, scary right? stuff, you know. That's really a scary stuff when you yeah. get to the point of, you know, needing, uh, yeah, an injection for a life vital vitamin is is pretty darn scary. When you can get that simply from the cheapest cut of meat in the supermarket shelf being liver, it's just, yeah, I mean, it's difficult to fathom sometimes. Yeah, crazy, crazy. Okay, so moving on now. I've got my eye on your company. I love it. I, I love seeing what you're bringing out. I was so delighted when you brought those supplements out. Um, oh, just quickly, people are asking, will they interfere? I don't think they would. With antidepressants like Prozac, or can you have them while you're breastfeeding, this sort of thing? Yeah, so it's difficult for us to give that advice out without knowing, obviously, you know the person in their medical history we'd obviously advise them to speak to their functional health practitioner or you know their their trained medical advisor who has got an understanding of uh, more of a, a less conventional route but at the end of the day it's real food um you know it's we have to, yeah it's, yeah it's real I mean, food. if you think about this this is the ultimate convenience food yeah not domino's pizza yeah. which they don't mind you eating you know, exactly regular. yeah go figure yeah. go figure yeah. kind of get yeah. that yeah. That, that seems weird to me. So, um, okay, what's next for you guys? Where do you see your vision going? Because I can see you guys just getting bigger and bigger, and I don't know what you're going to do because you're just going <laughs> to scale up. Oh, crikey, yeah. You should see the list of um, ideas that Jeff has for new products. I would love to see that wish list. I oh, bet yeah. it's insane. Yeah, oh, for, for us, it's all about listening to our customers and you know, creating products and bringing products out that uh, give our customers and people the tools to thrive, you know. Um, so so in the, in the conventional food space, in the, in the food industry, um, people become very myopic and just focus on one particular category, as they call them in the supermarkets. So we're just going to work in the mayonnaise space or we're going to work in, the, uh, I don't know, the, the, the snack bar space. But we want to be a brand that customers can, can look at Hunt and Gather is a silver approval. You haven't got to look at the back of pack because you know what it's going to be in there. Like You know our principles, you know our ethos. Um, and, and we just want people to become the best versions of themselves, essentially, and support them in doing so. So whatever kind of direction that takes us in, uh, we're, we're willing to, to let the wind direct us. Um, but yeah, Amy may be able to give you some more detail on that, but that's my kind of... <laughs> my uh, airy fairy view on it. <laughs> yeah, so we're, we're always in the pursuit of optimal health. And I think even bringing kind of more of the nation into understanding this, I think sometimes biohacking or um, MCT, it was always more for those people rather than for the yeah. majority of people. So we want to make real food accessible. We want to start asking questions. We want to like Jeff said, have, have that transparency and, and trust for people come to us that know what mayonnaise is but want a sugar-free, gluten-free, healthier option. And then they start to question, okay, well, what's MCT? We know this is good. And, and yeah. 
yeah. we lead them down a journey and a path. Yeah, and education as well. There's people like yourself yeah. that get us straight away. But um, initially, I wouldn't have done. It's just that, I mean, my first step into reading about what Dave Asprey was doing when I was really overweight and very, very depressed. I mean, that was sort of like the gateway to me. And then, like you, but yeah, you had yeah. to do it a little much younger, I started reading the back of labels. And I was putting things down, you know, really nice branded stuff that makes you think, oh, this is healthy. You turn it around, you've got sunflower oil in. You've got God knows how many names for it. Date syrup, sugar, you yeah, know? Sugar. And everything there is going to make you fat internally and externally and make your brain slower. What the hell is it in the healthy eating aisle for? You know, it's like these people in supermarkets. They don't even know how to section things properly. It's, it's crazy, you know? So it's really nice, like you say, to have a gold standard. You see Hunter and Gather and you know all the hard work's been done for you. You don't have to spin that bottle. You just put yeah. it in your trolley and you're off you go on your merry way and have an argument around the supermarket with whomever. Yeah, you know, exactly. it's just nice to know what the complications <laughs> ticked. <laughs> but yeah, so, so we've got, we've got um, we'd love to have more organ supplements. Um, yes, because I'm really interested in brain for brain health. Yeah, we've- we can't see me eating it. I've yeah. tried it once when I was in Oman. Oh my God, I nearly puked. I tried. That was just because I, I like, had to, because like I, I was in a strange situation. Tradition. Tra tradition. <laughs> How again. was it? In like a stew or just? No, it was it was really slimy and awful. And it was I, the, like, I had it. this really elaborate, like this prince's palace. And I was with some of some my friends, and we and I was with my mum as well, and we cut into it. And I was pregnant as well. Oh my God, it was just. Horrific. So yeah, I tried. I tried that, and I don't think I'll be going down that route again. But I do hear from the carnivores uh, that the carnivore diet type people yep, that it's yep. incredible for brain health. It's got the exact same fatty acids we should have for our brain health. Like I use MCT or there's something else in that. Like for like, yeah. which we throw away. It's yeah. already you know been chucked. So let's utilize it. Let's get some brain health down there. And let's start like obliterating depression. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, we want to create products as well that add flavour to people's dishes while obviously yeah. maintaining our value. So we can't reveal too much, but when we do have an exclusive, we'll, we'll let you guys know uh, for sure. Yeah, please, yeah. please do. And I'm going to wrap up now. Yeah, awesome. Any chance of a discount code? Yeah, of course. Just I throughout absolutely. lockdown. <laughs> I think we've got Divinia 15, which works um, for any of your followers, and it's 15% off on our website. So if you um, just type that out in the box at, and then click checkout, and then it should take that off everyone's order. But you're not sending to Spain. Well, I'll try and find a way, even if it's by pigeon. <laughs> oh, God. Do you know what? By the time it gets here, I'll be home anyway. I might actually go on your website and have a go of making it myself. How about that? I'll get the yeah. handheld wizard out. Give it a oh, go, yeah. Goodness. It'll be carnage. It won't work and it won't taste as good as yours. The one I really <laughs> recommend for you, that your one, is the one with garlic. My kids yeah. love it. They dip the chips in it. They dip the prawns in it. They dip the burgers in it. It's just <laughs> so easy. It's no-brainer. I absolutely love your stuff. Right, so thanks. thanks again, guys. Good luck. Please come back and talk to me again as soon as you have some more products out or if you've got some new ideas. And hopefully you'll get some more followers because they really need to get onto your website. Can you just tell them your website again so they can see your recipes? Yeah, sure. So it's www.hunterandgatherfoods.com or we're at Hunter and Gather UK on Instagram and you can we've got the link um in our bio there. Um but yeah if you follow us on Instagram it will be you get the first insight into any new products as well. Yeah. Perfect. Now I'm gonna repeat this on my live Insta again if you want to watch it. And I'm also going to I'm slowly getting my way around this bloody tech and I'm gonna upload it again on my YouTube channel and I'm gonna put it on IGTV as well. Awesome. So Thank you so much. And I literally can't wait to see what you guys do next. Yeah. Brilliant stuff. Keep it up. Thank you for the Thank support, Davina. Thank Take you. Take care. All right, bye -bye. everyone. Bye -bye. Love to everyone in Essex. <laughs> yeah, in Spain too. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Thank you.